Hey, Robert Medlin here. Today I want to just kind of uh, tell you about something that happened to me a number of years ago and uh, when the glory of God fell fell in our church and fell upon me specifically and, and tell you a little bit about that because uh, Jesus is going to be doing that more and more in these coming days. And uh, what happened was, uh, is that well, let me just let me just explain it in the scripture because if I just told you what happened, you'd probably wipe you out. <laughs> so in the scripture, it says that that uh, the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know at the whole. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. All creation is groaning as in the pains of childbirth up until the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship. The redemption of our bodies. So, um, God wants to do something with our bodies and he's living in us and so there are times when he just pours his power on us because he wants to do something he wants to he wants to step into our our earthly realm and bring heaven to earth with power and so there are a number of ways he does that with gifts of the spirit wonderful gifts of the spirit and and, uh, and that, those types of things but uh, occasionally there there are manifestations of of great power and um, my wife and I went to uh, to the Toronto uh, revival or renewal meetings uh, back around uh, 1994, and so uh, Jesus just poured out His Spirit gloriously as He was doing around the the country of different places, and and uh, just great laughter, people groaning all over the place, groaning just like I was reading here, people groaning all over the place, and and when my wife went in there, we thought that. Uh, because there was so much noise, uh, people were groaning and and shouting, and there was worship going on, and we thought everybody was crazy. So, uh, but we resisted the temptation to leave, so we stayed there and just just said, "Lord, is this you?" And all of a sudden, we just felt His power come over us, and so we were just dunked in His in His power there at that at that uh, revival meeting in Toronto, and then we came back to our church, and the same things. Uh, happened as we prayed for people at our church the power of the Lord would come on them they would laugh hysterically and uncontrollably they would laugh they would groan they would uh, have visions and dreams it was just phenomenal uh, what happened the same thing that happened at the revival meeting at Toronto and uh, so uh, one Sunday morning uh, we were having worship and and so I was just standing there and we were really at a place where we needed to have uh, we we had miraculously were provided with a building, and but all of the people in our church were like 20, 25 years old. Nobody had any money, and so um, we needed to pay the we needed to pay the the lease payments. You know, we had this beautiful building. We need to pay the lease payments, and so I uh, we thought, well, we need to get some Lord. We need to get some people in here, some some people that have some money. You know, that can that can that can help us financially while while uh, you're building the church here. So I was kind of thinking along those lines, and sure enough, we had quite a few new people showed up that morning, and so everything's going going good, and we're worshiping, and and all of a sudden I'm standing there, and all of a sudden I just feel this vibrating power, like I call it plasma. I used to, I've done I've done some work with plasmas in the in the past, and it was like plasma, high energy, high voltage, high energy power just started, just came on the top of my head. And then it, then it just started, like oil just started just falling all over my, all down through, down over my head, completely over my head. And then it went down over my whole body until I was completely encased in this plasma power. And and as it was happening, I was thinking, Lord, am I going to die? Is this, you know, it, you know, it was it was so much power. You just, I just felt like you know it would be electrocuting or something. But but uh, I realized I wasn't going to die. But this tremendous power came on me, and then, and then all of a sudden, I collapsed to the floor, and I started, 
I started groaning. And so here I'm, I'm groaning loudly. Here we've got a church full of new people. I'm laying on the floor, uh, groaning, groaning loudly. You know, the, I must. I had the, uh, just like these, uh, groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Just like in, just like groaning with childbirth. I wasn't doesn't have any pain, but I was groaning. The Holy Spirit just took over my body and just was 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 using my body to express Himself. Groaning for the revelation of the children of God. Just tremendous power was all over me and here I am groaning <laughs> so the, the, we had a, wor a worship team was just uh, phenomenal and so they just kept singing and the song they were singing was I believe in Jesus uh, it's an old uh, vineyard song I believe in Jesus so uh, I believe he is the son of God and, and so uh, he's here with his power right now the song goes on to say so they just kept singing that song over and over again while I laid there and groaned for who knows how long. Finally, I'm encased in this power and I realized that that uh, that, that power could raise the dead. That if we could get the dead in there, we could get them, they would be raised because there was so much power on me. I just felt like the dead would be raised. So so I struggled to my feet and, and I said, ask everybody that needed a miracle to come down to the front because I explained there was so much power on me and so people started coming to the front when they got about five or ten feet from me they just collapsed to the ground they just fell to the ground and so i finally made my way around to each of them and i've got this tremendous encased in power um, and i'm praying for people and and uh, great miracles took place that day wonderful miracles took place that day and uh prayed for people and and eventually i crawled back up on the platform there and i was laying on the laying on the ground just still encased in this power and uh and everybody was just crying people were weeping people were laughing it was just people were laughing in the spirit people were weeping in the spirit it was just a phenomenal holy time and uh, I, I don't know if the people that were visiting left or not I, I i can't tell you what happened to them but i'm laying up on the platform and one of our musicians he was who was a piano and uh, keyboard player for us he came crawling up to me from a long ways away. He crawled on the floor, and he crawled up on the platform, and he just so humbly, he just said, he just said, Pastor, he said, I'm bound. He said, I'm a homosexual. I'm bound. And he, when he said, I'm bound and homosexual, just the love of God. Uh, when I looked at people and I was in this state, it was just like love would gush out of my eyes. I could just feel love gushing out of me towards them. Uh, that was one of the things that was happening as this power has come out, love was just pouring out for everybody. Just, uh, it was like groaning, uh, love, love. And so when this when this man just said, Pastor, I'm bound, I'm, I'm a homosexual, just the love of Jesus just poured out of me and I grabbed him and hugged him and power was flowing out of me and 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 uh, he just he just collapsed, he just felt the love of Jesus and and I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I, I hadn't ever experienced this before. Uh, but Jesus was setting people free. It was just a powerful thing. Um, and I just, as, as this was happening, I was thinking, well, you know, if they could get the dead in here, just like I said before, they would be raised. And so we had great miracles that day, just great power. Uh, it, was a, it was an awesome, uh, reverent, reverent if you can, with people laughing and hysterically and weeping and crying and rolling on the floor it just it was a holy time it was a holy time so my wife and I uh, turned that church over eventually to another pastor and we went to Redding California about the same time that uh, Bill Johnson was came to Redding to pastor Bethel Church and so we get there we're going to start a new church and and uh, we met some pastors at a Christian bookstore one of the pastor's wives owned the Christian bookstore so uh, this pastor who said, "Why don't you come up with this? We're going to have a start having prayer meetings up at Bethel." So, won't you come up there with us? So, we're going to do it every every Wednesday at ten o'clock. So, my wife and I went up there to Bethel Church where uh, where we were having this prayer meeting. There was probably uh, seven or eight pastors from local pastors from the town, and some of the Bethel leadership were there. And and what ended up happening is we were just we came to pray for a revival, but we ended up just praying for each other. So we just prayed for each other, prayed for blessings for each other. We all shared testimonies about miracles the Lord was doing in our ministries. And 
and uh, one of the times I shared about this power that fell on me at uh, uh, when we were up in Florence at the church, and and uh, and just told about that to the to the uh, to the pastors that were there, and to the other people that were gathered there at that prayer meeting. And Bill Johnson pops up and said, "You know what? Same thing happened to me." And so Bill Bill told about when when the power of God fell on him and 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 encased him. He was in bed at home at the time, but encased him with great power. And he almost shook off the bed. There was so much power on him. But uh, it was just an anointing that came up on Bill, and, and uh, which is manifested uh, in his life. He just had great fruitfulness and and great power and signs and wonders. And and so, uh, but but uh, that that was a not a common thing. But it was at least I found out somebody else had 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 this experience. And I read it's cases maybe Rodney Howard Brown had that experience. Uh, maybe Kenneth Hagin had similar experiences. So. Uh, but uh, so I, was, I felt safe about it. But uh, but from then on, when we started praying for people, when my wife and I would pray for people, most of the time we would just feel this power flowing through them through our arms, and so uh, we would see miracles. And so we would go up to Bethel, you know, at the Wednesday meeting. We'd tell about a miracle that happened down at the hometown buffet, or we'd tell about a miracle that happened uh, as we were doing something in our motor home, and and other pastors would share what happened. It, uh, miracles that had happened with them and so we were just sharing about the miracles and and just loving on each other and it was just a phenomenal time the pastors started uh, pastors from different don denominations started traveling together started started preaching at each other's churches and they started traveling together and doing ministry together overseas uh, do two different dom denominations three different denominations they would go over there and minister it was just powerful but that was the beginning of the revival at Bethel and of course then it spread to other cities in our region and spread all over the state it spread all over the country spread all over the world and the school of supernatural ministry started and it was just an awesome time and my wife and i pastored a church there and just a little church and uh and it was just a wonderful time and we would all all the pastors and their and their people would take would go over on friday night to the to the revival meeting at bethel to the and so we would all go over there and so all the we'd all get together and on Wednesdays for prayer, and we get together and take our people over to to uh, to Bethel on Friday nights, and now I think it moved to Saturday night, whatever. But it was just a wonderful time of unity in the town and and among the pastors, so much love for for the for the leadership to, for each other and for the people. It was just so much love flowing. Great, astounding miracles happened. It was just we just expected greater miracles to happen all the time. So. Uh, Anyway, that was a wonderful time, but it was an ex expression of the scripture in Romans 8 where the where the Holy Spirit just clothed us and he and he it was him doing the groaning and he he was clothing us with power and he was groaning for the revelation of the sons of God, revelation of of people getting saved, of people getting filled with the spirit with power coming on people. He was just interceding for people to be healed, for miracles to take place, and just using us. He said, excuse me, I want to use your body here. I need to I need to do some interceding here. I'm just going to use your body. I'm going to take over. <laughs> so uh, that's basically the way I see it is the Holy Spirit took over and he, he did his praying and what he wanted to pray. And the Spirit intercedes for us with groans that cannot be uttered in articulate speech. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints with groans that can't be uttered in articulate speech. We, we know what groans are now, with groans that can't be uttered in articulate speech. Deep groans from the belly, deep groans from the belly, deep, deep groans from the belly. And it, it describes Jesus when he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. It said that he that he groaned, and, and I, can, I, I can imagine what that, would, what that was like. It was loud groans before he told Lazarus to come out to to come forth. So um, anyway, so I just pray that the Lord would touch you. Uh, and as we pray for spirit, pray for people, the Holy Spirit has touched people with power. And so I just pray that you would just uh, right now, if you just stretch your hands toward me, I'll stretch my hands towards you. And just pray that the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon you. That his anointing would come upon you, that you would feel his vibrating power, power, that you would feel power coming upon you. And generally it's in your arms and hands, but it could be it could be all over your whole body. I just pray that power will come upon, Lord, the ones that are hungering and thirsting, even the ones that aren't, Lord. I just pray that you just like me, you zap me, Lord, that you would zap them with your power. And you would anoint them, Lord, and that they would know that the power of God 
is on them, the anointing is on them, that you're in them, Lord, with power to, to do miracles, that to, to nothing is impossible, that uh, deaf ears, blind eyes, diseases will flee. Nothing is impossible because your power is dwelling in us. And when we can sense that power, you know, we don't have to sense the power. Pray for, pray for many people that had miracles, didn't, didn't feel a thing. But w when you feel that power on you and coming out of you, flowing through you and upon you, it gives you faith. It gives you faith that, that his power is going to heal them. And that's what we're trusting in is Jesus' power to heal them. And so we trust it. He said, you know, we know his power is on us. We know his, he said, lay hands on people. They're going to recover in the name of Jesus. So, but when you can feel it, it just boosts your faith so that you can pray with with great faith, great faith that that uh, miracles will occur. So in, in Jesus' name, I just pray that you will just experience this, uh, this power, this tangible power, and that it, it's not just for your blessing, that you will just say, hey, the power of God's on me. Let me just pray for you. Jesus is touching me. And that you'll touch your people in your family, your wife, your husband, and children. That that the uh, touch other people, Lord, believing that Jesus is going to touch them and and miraculously give them what they need, whether it's a miracle or whether it's uh, a miracle of finances or deliverance in their emotions or whatever, that uh, when you touch them, that power is going to go into them and they're going to be set free in Jesus' name. It's a wonderful time to be alive. The whole creation is longing for the revelation of the sons of God. And the whole creation is groaning, groaning right now, groaning for the revelation of the sons of God who, who are clothed with power, clothed with power to bring the power of Jesus to, pe to people, to, to anoint them and to set them free from every oppression and to bless them in every way. Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.